Hello and welcome to the Bellingham Real Estate Podcast. I'm Paul Balzotti. I'm here with Marty Kuchba. Welcome, Marty. Hi, uh, thanks, Paul. Yeah, and today we are talking about we're talking a little bit about cabins, Airbnbs, but primarily about Glacier. And Marty, you serve all over Whatcom County, but you kind of got into specializing in Glacier. So I want to talk to you about that. I have some questions for you. But how long have you been in uh, real estate? <laughs> 20 years now. 20 I was years first now. license in 2003. 2003. And you were, so. I think, basically exactly the same as me, right? Or wait, were you right before me or right? I was right after you. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So a few months after, I think. A few months so. after. So I have a lot more experience than you. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. No, no. Yeah. So we've been pretty much on the exact same trajectory here at Donald mm -hmm. Scott, which is, which is awesome. And so let's, we'll, we'll cover, again, Airbnbs, cabins. Um, the communities in Glacier, but you and you serve all over Whatcom County. But how did you things evolve for you where Glacier became part of your business? Well, when I when I first got started in real estate, I yeah. was desperate like everybody else. Uh, Glacier at that time had not really been discovered yet, so it was nobody was really working that market up there. And that market worked for me. I live out in the Baker District on acreage, and so it just kind of was a easy fit for me. Mm -hmm. And again, at the time, nobody else really wanted to bother going up there. 45-minute drive from Bellingham, um, nobody wanted to do it. Yeah, how much were the lots you guys were selling? Oh, you could buy lots from six to $10,000 all day long. Yeah. Um, nice yeah. lots, good what, lots. What were those, where were those lots? Because I'm thinking like this is 04, 05. Or something mm -hmm. like oh six, yeah. something when you maybe it was oh six when you were when you were started selling some of those lots. <laughs> were those what community were those in? You know, I've, it seems like I've done most of my business oh. in Mount Baker Rim. Oh, Mount Baker Rim, okay. But we, I mean, when you're up there, it's all right. You know, Snowline, Glacier Springs. We were selling in all of them, mm -hmm. but um, mine just seemed like it wound up. I did more in Mount Baker Rim. So. Okay. Okay. So cool. And then, so you started selling lots up there. You just were willing to make the drive basically. Yeah. And, um, and the, the community spoke to you. So that's cool. So before we kind of get into the, I want to talk about all the communities in Glacier because there is differences. Oh, and yeah. then there's obviously outside of those communities areas that you could, you could just buy too. But, but the communities are all very distinct. But I wanted to first ask you, especially if somebody's listening that maybe is also looking in Maple Falls, maybe look, looking in other resort areas too, not just in Glacier. When you look at, you know, you have stick built, regular residential property. I don't know if that's even really the right way to put it. Um, versus cabins, log homes, not a lot of log homes up there, but there's a lot of like A-frames. A lot of A-frames, chalet. Chalet style. type yeah. homes. What have you learned about about those type of homes that you, is there anything when you're showing houses now and you, whether it's during, during the home inspection or just before, what are some kind of key differentiators between those type of homes? Uh, well, you know, first of all, just for market wise, yeah, everyone wants cabiny. And that's a word that's wide open. Cabiny could be a wood ceiling, a wood floor, wood on the walls. Um, the chalet style looks real nice in cabiny. Uh, so, you know, cabiny was always a key word, mm. and some of the homes over the years were built more to where they looked like they maybe would have been in Bellingham. Those, there's a market for everything up there, but those were probably the least attractive to the most people. Most of them just, they want some sort of cabiny. Now, the last five years, we've changed over, which I never saw coming to the modern style, the yeah. shed roof. Um, you know, shed roof, new, modern looking, and it's it was like it was something new, and those have really taken over up there the, on new construction. So. Yeah, and and it seems like a lot of them now they're building a modern, but then they're just putting in kind of lodgy kind of accents to mm -hmm. kind of give it that northwest kind of yeah. feel. But you're saying, generally speaking, traditionally, the more chalet style homes would actually sell better. I think they fit the bigger part of the market. Yeah. yeah. The chalet, yeah. chalet, A-frame. Uh, you know, these days it, we've gone from the inexpensive, mm -hmm. very rough cabins to now we're more and more nicer cabins. And that goes across the board with all the styles. Was there anybody building, how many of them were like kits, you know, versus 
Well, oh, who, who was well, building those up there? Well, you know, they started in the 70s up yeah. there. Yeah. And there were a few kits. Some were came down out of Canada, mm -hmm. like a kit type home. Uh, there's been a few log kit type homes. For the most part, you know, most are most are framed up there. And so, no real like negatives or positives as far as the construction style. I mean, it can vary so much anyway, right? With the different oh, yeah. builders up there. I mean, so, like anywhere, there's good builders and there's yeah questionable builders and. You know, the big thing is, yes, you get your home inspection and... Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I think the functional, the functionality of those homes, maybe residentially, is different than up there because you could have, you know, a lot of people want to stop, like, maybe even if those rooms are a little... Because traditionally, those homes seem to have smaller bedrooms. Maybe there's one open, you know, open room. Loft. Loft type yeah. rooms. And if you're only staying there for three nights... Maybe that's fine, but if it's if it's your permanent residence, maybe you don't want your bedroom that way. <laughs> and, and so I guess for that for that purpose, and the the lots themselves drive a lot of that because the sure. lot you have to fit a septic on the lot, right? And most of the lots are uh, under quarter acre. In, most are, I'd say, um, depends on development too. But you know, when the septic is going to drive, how many bedrooms you can put in the house, right? So if it's a two bedroom septic system. You can have two bedrooms and the county watches for that. Yeah. You can also have a loft or an office space, but technically it's a two-bedroom home. So. That's a really good point. So when searching, if a, if a buyer is searching, they really need to lower their bedroom count by one, even if they're looking for one, because they, they might be, there might be a oh, three-bedroom, yeah. true three-bedroom that's listed as a two-bedroom or a four-bedroom mm -hmm. that's listed as a three-bedroom. Yep. Um, because they have that loft that's not technically a bedroom. Um, because it's not, but it's used as a bedroom. But it's used as a bedroom. Yeah. That's a really good point. Let's talk about the communities. So, well, why don't you just jump right into that? So there's Mount okay. Baker Rim. There's three major communities, yeah. and just headed from Bellingham to the east. Uh, first would be Glacier Springs. Yeah, uh, Glacier Springs is not gated. Uh, it's county maintained roads within Glacier Springs, and there's no amenities in there. So mm -hmm. you just you have a house up. On a larger lot, they tend to be larger lots, minimum quarter acre up there. And so, you know, you just have a house up there in a development. Mm -hmm. um, they do have $180, $180 a year dues in Glacier Springs, but that, that's for your water. Yeah. Because they have their own private water system. And it's supposed to be really good water in that. It's supposed to be award-winning water. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I saw that on the website, <laughs> award-winning. I love it. I don't know what award, but it's yeah. award-winning. So Yeah. So then as you approach, that's about two miles west of Glacier. Mm -hmm. And then as you go through the town of Glacier, you've got Mount Baker Rim on the right, and then a little further up, Snowline on the left. Those are both gated communities, private roads, private maintained roads. Uh, both have swimming pools, tennis courts, clubhouses, uh, full-time maintenance people taking care of the community property. And so, you know, it, it's... Each development fits different people in different ways. Mm. Some people don't want the amenities, and they like Glacier Springs for that reason. Well, doesn't that, yeah, because you, and your dues are probably cheaper, I'd imagine. Uh, Mount Baker Rim and Snowline are both in the 750 to 800 range, both of them. And then Glacier so, Springs is, is basically just water. 200, but that's your water. Right. So. I know that there's a key difference between one of those, well, Glacier Springs, obviously, you could do an Airbnb right away. Mm -hmm. Remind me, or remind the, anyone listening, with Snowline and Mount Baker Rim, how does that differentiate? Okay, so you can rent in all three of the communities, whether you do it Airbnb or month to month, whatever you want to do. Uh, the difference is in Mount Baker Rim, you have to own the property for a year before you can rent. Mm. Otherwise, uh, you know, Snowline and Glacier Springs, both you can rent from day one. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so that's a big difference. That's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. it's, um, you know, I have to say, 15 years ago, I'd say 80, 90% of the people that I would sell cabins to up there had no intention of ever renting. They were yeah. family cabins. Yeah. That shifted, big time shifted. So. Well, and that, that intermixes into the, the, the last question I had for you, which is, you know, the Airbnb market has grown exponentially. That's not just in Glacier. That's everywhere, yeah. right? And, um, and that's no different up there. So... Before, as you said, it was mainly second homes. Would you say 
a higher percentage of can more more Canadian? Was it over fifty percent? You think Canadian or oh, twenty years ago it was probably seventy percent Canadian owned, maybe yeah. even eighty. And would that be point. maybe flipped now? Yes, I'd okay. say so. So yeah. now it's more American, um, and and a lot of those are more looking to Airbnb at least as a yeah. supplemental thing, mm -hmm. or some as a full time, right? Some some are bought with the idea of just being a rental. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so before I get too much into Airbnb, the last question I had about the different communities, um, and maybe, but this is kind of related to the Airbnbs, is do they have, and this is something you would know, um, do they have distinct kind of culture, kind of community feel within the three? And I know you can't, we can't get into too much of like profiling um, each neighborhood, but would you say that like one of them has the most amount of Airbnbs or one is more kind of more families or I, cause to me, my, my, my yeah. understanding was, is like Snowline seems like it has, well, I guess they, both of those communities, Snowline and Mount Baker Rim would have, because they have swimming pools and stuff would have a lot of families. Yeah, but the difference between those two yeah. is Snowline renters can use a swimming pool and the tennis courts. Okay. They can use the amenities. Yeah. Mount Baker Rim, they cannot. Why? <laughs> it's it's within the bylaws that wait rent, who can't who can, oh renter, the renters renters can't. cannot use a swimming pool and tennis court so Mount Baker Rim then is definitely designed very heavily for people who are like living their full time or a second home and not and kind of a little bit anti I mean if you're not allowing the Airbnb <laughs> people to use the amenities and you're waiting a year you're just making it a little bit more difficult. I think it tends to make it a little more family oriented yeah. Um, and I don't mean maybe that, more people know each other. Don't mean in there that too. in a bad way against yeah. the others. You know, Snowline tends to have, for years, was thought of as having nicer homes in there. Mm -hmm. uh, they they all have nice homes now. Yeah, uh, Mount Baker Rim used well does still allow uh, manufactured homes. Oh, that's the only one up there that does. Okay, which um, you know there's not very many, but there's some still up there. Yeah, uh, Snowline's all used to tended to used to be bigger cabins um just a nicer feel maybe mm -hmm. mount baker rim maybe a little more family oriented feel glacier springs is sort of its own little thing down there and you know big lots lots of big trees um public roads so they can't gate it mm -hmm. so you lose a little bit of security that way yeah but it's not that it's a big issue but you know. but you have but the bigger lots you get a little more privacy Potentially. And Snowline lots tend to be bigger than Mount Baker Rim lots. Okay. Okay. Mount Baker Rim's the smallest. Okay. I believe it started as a Trend West type thing. They used to bus Canadians down. Oh, really? They bring them down for the day and That's then try awesome. to sell lots to them. Yeah. Wow. Back in the early 70s, that was. So. Yeah. yeah. With the Airbnb market, um, I know there's a couple companies up there. What are the two companies that do a lot of it up there? And I, there's um, well, there's there's several. the The biggest by far would be Mount Baker Lodging. Mount Baker Lodging, and they've yeah. been up there for decades doing the vacation rentals. Yeah, and then you've got I think there's exceptional luxury getaways, and I think there's a, a luxury getaways. Yeah. there's a lot of smaller. Well, Month. there's there's a few smaller yeah. companies, and then Mount Baker Rim. I'm I'm gonna say these days the tendency is to go with the Airbnb. Yeah. And, um, you know, VRBOs. Yeah. Problem up there is because prices have climbed so much, there's no, the rental market has, or I mean, the um, labor market has dried up. So trying to get cleaners and stuff is it's 45 minutes from Bellingham. Um, you know, there's just, there's nowhere for labor type people to rent reasonably in order to take care of the places up there. Well, so, but that's even more of a reason why you probably need to hire a company to, because they, at least they have facility, they've, they have people, whereas if you're out there trying to do it yourself and you're trying to find mm -hmm. people to get in there. And, and the ones that are established now, uh, Mount Baker Lodging always has people. Yeah. But it, you know, but, you know, there's people up there. You just can't, they're just harder to find. Yeah. And, and I guess, in a, so what you're also saying, what I'm hearing you say, though, is that it's becoming more of this kind of a higher end Airbnb type of area and less of a place that just, you know, anybody can go live at and kind of thing and just ski, you know, just ski and hang out kind of thing. It's more of 
it's more of becoming a more expensive place to be. One of my neighbors has has worked up a uh, the ski area, yeah, for twenty some years, yeah, and they now have seven buses that they run from Bellingham to Glacier every day with employees. Wow. Where it used to be, a lot of them could stay up in Glacier, relatively inexpensive in one of the old cabins. Yeah. Well, that market shifted all that, so there's there's nobody they can afford to rent up there. Yeah, and even and I mean, you could. I, I think that there's definitely people in Maple Falls and in the glacier outskirts that probably work in that area, work at Mount Baker mm -hmm. or, you know, and I, and I think you could be, if you're not in one of those communities, you know, it's a little bit more affordable, but of course, a lot of those properties are then on acreage, which yeah. then also makes them, you know, but prices with rates going up, um, things are adjusting, right? It was, <laughs> it was the glacier was the hottest market over the last three years. We're talking 40, 45% appreciation per yeah. year. Now prices have uh, adjusted the most. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking, I think they were down 15% um, this last 12 months. Um, what, do you, what do you forecast that? Do you think they're going to stay soft for a little while longer? I think it'll follow the rest of the market. You know, yeah. It is second homes. Yeah. And second homes tend to <clears throat> be the first to, first to drop in prices. Mm -hmm. just because they're a luxury. They're, they're not something you have to have. So, you know, if someone, times get tough, interest rates go up, people can tend to, well, we don't have to have that glacier. We'll rent a couple more years kind of a thing. Right. You know, versus when rates were basically free, you know, 1%, 2%. Uh, yeah. That, um, you know, it, it made it a lot easier for a lot of people to make that investment. Yeah. Well, and the nice thing is, is the reason why the bottom won't totally fall out is not only do, is it the only community really anywhere near Mount Baker, but also, and, and you only have so much supply up there, um, there's not like that much more development. There will never be another development like those. They, yeah. They and so around. there, there's only, and there's not that many lots left in any of those developments. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to stay strong that way. And then also, even in the market softening, the Airbnb market the amount of people who rent Airbnbs, you know, just the demand has increased so much. When we were, we're renting a place up there soon. And, um, you know, if you wanted to find something, you know, <laughs> relatively nice, um, there was, there was still limited options. Even with oh, yeah. all the Airbnbs up there, they book out pretty well. Well, I know um, Mount Baker Lodging used to say that if you wanted to rent during the Christmas, New Year's, two weeks there, you booked at least a year ahead. Yeah. And, yeah. and they carry, I think it's up to about oh, roughly maybe 100 rentals at any given time, 70 to 100, somewhere in there. And the, you could not get, they'll fill up for a year ahead on certain weekends. The bank slalom weekend's another one. That's, you know, good luck trying to find a place up there for that right now. Mm. Maybe for next year, but not right now. Well, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that pretty much covers it, my man. All right. So thank you for joining us, Marty. Now, um, again, if you want to talk to Marty about Glacier, you can reach out to Marty Direct. Also, of course, 20 years in real estate serving Whatcom County, Bellingham. I know you do more than 50% of your business outside of Glacier <laughs> now, so you can reach out to this guy for anything. But uh, thanks for joining me, Marty. Oh, thanks for having me, Paul. All right, Thank thanks you. for listening. You're watching, guys. Cheers. <laughs>